Welcome everybody, this is Stax Gaming, this is Larry, back with a One Piece video, time to do some red. Uh, red did win uh, at the Treasure Cup in, I want to say, what was it, the Treasure Cup in Los Angeles. This is not that deck profile, everybody set up their deck profile uh, to be a mid-range deck. Uh, I know the games go pretty long, mid-range is kind of where you want to be. Um, I'm actually trying to end the game early. Um, if I can win by turn six or eight, I'm good. If I get by turn 10 or 12, it's hard to maintain, but I'm trying to just, um, what do you say? Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. <laughs> so this is, uh, the red Ludi, uh, red leader Luffy. His ability is active main. You can assign Arrested Dawn to a character. Uh, so that's pretty good. I think it's, it helps push, helps make some of your rushers more active. And I'll get into that right now. I'm going to go for the stuff that I'm going to do my one through four drop or my one through five drops first. And then we'll get into heavy hitters and then 2k counters. Um, and then my events. So to start, to make sure he uh, can use his ability optimally, we want to make sure we play choppers just to keep our creatures alive. We really don't care about life. I've gone to the point where I will get down to one life and still push for game because I, I just don't care about my life. Um, then to make sure I can have what I need in my hand, we'll do the Namis. Basically, it allows you to search a straw hat. Uh, there's no way to bounce her back. If it's, um, you know, if it's essential and I need to apply pressure, I'll assign her Dawn. So to get her up to swinging power is really not that hard. Especially because I can assign a rested one to her. So she does become a swinger most of the time. Most people don't like it, but it's got to be done. You got to apply the pressure somehow. And then really where you get your leader's uh, ability to go off is with the Sanji. Sanji requires to have two Dawn on him to give him rush. So you will assign one here and then give one active. And basically he'll start swinging already turn two. And then so you'll have this and this swinging in for six and five. It applies the pressure pretty good. That's why I, I think it's uh, essential to, to try to use this leader's ability as to his best ability to get him to go off. He doesn't have a counter. He's not that great. I get it. But if you push in and you make your opponent use cards from his hand that he doesn't want to, you can basically starve his resource off the bat. I only play one. I might play two. It's good just because it can assign himself rested Dawn. The downside is he doesn't have rush, but what's good as long as he has that two dawn on him, he can't be KO'd by a creature that has a strike ability. So when you look at abilities, it's gonna be in this top corner right here, up here. And uh, strike is heavy in the format. So if I look at my leader, my leader itself has strike right here. So, if I was playing a mirror match, they wouldn't be able to swing in him to KO him. They would have to swing in with something that was like a specialist uh, or something else other than a striker. Then um, we'll go into our Namis, or no, our Nico Robbins. Nico Robin is good. Uh, I mean, any color that plays red is playing Nico Robin. Basically, when she attacks, you can destroy a cost of something, a 3,000 or less. It is good. I do play it for that to get rid of blockers to help me go push in for game. She does got to be up on board for a turn. It is a little slow, but when you're playing the mirror match, it's necessary. Then, to help you apply pressure, you got your Zoros. You got to play the four. If you're not playing four, I don't know what you're doing. It's almost mandatory. A three for five with rush is just the best, uh, in my opinion. 
and then you can make it a six with leader's ability to sign one after you tap them so you still have open dawn to defend without having to tap out completely and then what i think that makes this deck hang in there for the long game is uta she does not have a counter on her it is a little slow but she helps recycle your choppers she helps bring back your zoros she basically anything that's a three drop or less will bring it back to your hand. So on play, you can add up to one character with the cost of three or less uh, from your trash to your hand. So basically, you can keep getting all your low drops. You can get your 2K counters back. And I think it's honest, I used her twice in a game just to get Tony Tony Chopper and to and to keep uh, resources in my hand without trying to dump my hand. And it worked beautiful. Honestly, this right here, uh, I would like to put it to four, but she does not have a counter and I play a lot of cards without counters. So we do not do that, unfortunately. Then we play three, Rush Luffy. I know everybody's saying, why aren't you playing four? It's a Luffy deck. Um, well, I, I subbed one out for the two drop. I thought the two drop was better because it takes, it takes somebody having to remember to swing at that character with something else other than strike. So if they happen to swing in it and they forget about it, it's still alive. So that's the only reason why I did keep it. Plus you do have to assign two Dawn to make it unblockable which is not hard because you can assign one here right make give it one and then give it one active so it is still possible off of six dawn to make this unblockable but then you don't get to defend um and it doesn't have a counter the other card the other luffy i, I put in here the two drop does have a counter it comes up sometimes where I do drop it as a counter. That's why it's kind of hard to play for. Then, the MVP of the deck. Three Shanks. Um, pe some people play four. I was playing one, and I was just getting really lucky. He, um, I was really just summoning, summoning him off of Manifestation because I really wanted to see this card. I think it's the best card Red has, a 9 for 10, and low drop blockers can't uh, block. So anything that has a 2,000 power or less can't block. So Tony Tony Chopper becomes dead. Um, per some purple does play a 2 drop that has 2,000 power. Sometimes that's relevant because I've noticed purple has been getting away from the bigger drop uh for blockers because they want to save the dawn to defend and they can or either drop their bigger stuff you know it's more compatible without having to decide do I block or do I swing um, so I think he's more relevant now and then might as well give a rest to dawn right and then assign one to him he becomes 12 so I mean it's still good with your leader and then one open if you have 10 dawn he becomes 12 so you can't you can't beat it re realistically with that no downside. So in purple, the downside is like the ten drop Kaido that's twelve. You have to nuke the whole entire board and then minus Don, and then he can't swing. I think this is good. You get there with the power for twelve off a of nine, and you don't get or your opponent can't activate two k or two thousand power creatures for blockers. I think it was good. At the one, I kind of saw it. Then I put it to two. It wasn't coming up as much. And then I put it to three. Three is perfect. Um, it's easy to play. And then playing them back to back is amazing. <laughs> when you do that, your opponent's just like, I'm done. And then uh, for our... Basically, I would say... The, how we stay alive in this deck is uh most people might in the red decks probably play like 12 or 10 2k counters i play 14. i play 14 because i i say it's necessary 
uh, because you're going to play some of these cards. So out of the 14, you might have like 12 uh, or 10 2k counters. And you will sometimes play the Brook to assign to Dawn to go for the extra swing. Um, I think it's good. And next turn, it for two Dawn, it becomes a swinger. So it's not bad. Uh, the 2k counter is what normally I would use it for unless I know I'm pushing for a game. Then I'll play it to assign extra Dawn. Another 2k counter would be our Usopp. Usopp is good. Um, I have not played him to draw. I mainly use him as a 2k counter just to keep my creatures alive. There might be only, out of all these creatures, there's probably only two I play. Um, first one being the Brook. Th this is mainly just being out of my hand as a 2k counter. Then we have the Sanji's. Sanji's is good. I played it one time uh, just because my opponent was, uh, wasn't able to get through my board and I needed some resources. So I played it active main once per turn. I can uh, add a card from my life and then give it power. Even though you do give it power, um, he can't swing. But if you need that extra card out of life, you know, you don't have too many triggers that come out of life. But you just want that if you happen to pull a counter out of there that you need or maybe a blocker yet you can play um that's the reason why he's good because most people are going to just try to deal with your board and you're just trying to keep your board alive the longer you keep your board alive the better chance you have at winning with this deck and that's basically what this deck is made to do is keep your board alive then we play four otamas She's good on play, minus 2,000. Um, I'll use her if I'm trying to get rid of a blocker or like a really big creature I don't want to deal with because it's going to cost me too much to assign my Don to, to kill it. And I, there's like a better play, right? Um, so she, I'll play it. And then she will match up with uh, basically the Gum Gum Jet Pistol. The Gum Gum Jet Pistol and her just reduce the cost of stuff, allow you to get in there for game, um, or not have to be worried about like your opponent swinging back on you and you completely dying because there's something you can't, you don't have enough materials in your hand to counter out of it. You just remove it from the board. Uh, it destroys something with the cost of 6,000 or less. And if it comes out of your trigger, you automatically activate it to KO something. So when it comes out of life, it's premium. Because it, it'll stop another swinger to go in for game sometimes. And then um, I played two of these. I was playing three, but I took out one for a rush shanks because uh, I don't want to be on the defending aspect. I want to be on the pressure end aspect. But I do play this because it KOs something of a 4,000 or cost or something. So like, um, if he happens, because some players are making the mistake to play some of their small stuff, then swing. But the best play right now is to swing first, then play your other cards. But it depends what abilities you want to go off or what you're having to trigger. But the fact that you get to protect yourself and then kill something, I think is good. Plus trigger. The trigger is not that great. It says give your opponent's leader or one of your characters minus a thousand, right? Is it a thousand? Oh, no. It's minus uh, 10,000. So if you swing it in for a really big creature, um, you can reduce the cost of, say, like Big Drop Kaido. So if he wanted to swing, you stop them from swinging. It doesn't come up too much. Uh, out of life because I, I have I've hard drawed it. I think gum gum jet pistols more relevant out of life And then my last one this I was playing two But I think the one is okay because it's a finisher. You don't want to hold it into your hand for too long So Basically Main, select one of your straw hat type leaders or characters. Your opponent cannot activate blockers if that leader or character attacks during this turn. 
So basically, you get an unblockable character. And like, if you just want to push for a game and you've taken all your opponent's life, assign nine dawn to your leader, play this for one, and your leader pushes in for game for 14. So I think that's really good. There's not a lot of people that will leave a lot open for 14 because you're trying to control game state. That's why I think one is good. Um, plus you have your rush Luffy that your opponent can't activate blockers. So three plus this, and then you have your shanks. So in grand total, you have three, six creatures that can't be blocked and then one card to go in for the push. So if you time it out correctly, that's pretty much game seven unblockables basically you need six so any variant of that ratio would i think would put you in a good position uh this deck profile um i came up with it because i wanted to do just fast in your face and apply pressure and then make you misplay basically by forcing you to play other other ways or other lines of play other than your optimal play because I'm forcing you to think that you're not going to live long enough to play your bigger cards. Um, it has happened. I have changed the uh, what people or how people play at the pace because they think they have more time. This just lays down a lot of pressure. I like it. You can mess up if uh, you don't make sure you have enough counters in your hand. But that's also why there's 14 in the deck to make sure your creatures stay alive. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about it. Leave it down in the comments. Likes, comment, subscribe. Uh, we'll be doing uh, deck profiles with this. I have taken this to locals. Um, the three times that I've taken it, and the first time I took it, I went three and one, but I only had one shanks in there. And then the next time I played, I also went three and one, but my only update was to add another Shanks because uh, I saw how good it was against the meta. And then the last time I went and played, I I still went um, three and one, but I didn't add the last Shanks. So um, what the difference was, uh, I'll test it out again when I go to my next locals. Hopefully I win it, I go undefeated, but I added the third Shanks just because I want to see it and it's hard for people to deal with it and if they over assign to try and kill it and I protect it I've made them waste all their resources you know and if I do that keep it alive and then drop another shanks they almost can't come back from that um that's my thoughts on the profile let me know what you think uh the gameplay will be coming soon <clears throat> thank you for watching everybody